Parenting Junkie. Hey guys, welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. Do you ever wonder how we can empower little girls? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with being feminine and girly and enjoying all of the stereotypically pink, glittery, princess girly stuff. But as we all know, there are many ways that girls are undermined or put into positions that don't do them a service. And many of the classic things that people say to little girls support that disempowerment. If you passionately believe that we could be doing better by little girls, give this video a like to help it be more discoverable to more parents. So I'm gonna give you a list of 10 things to stop saying to little girls. My favorite is number eight, and I'd love to hear what your favorite is in the comments below. Want to remember these ideas and share them with others? I've created a cheat sheet to print out and put on your fridge, add to your vision board for the week, or leave out casually for your husband or your mom to read, or share it digitally on Facebook with your children's teachers, for example. The link is in the description below. Just click the link and get your free PDF to keep these ideas actionable and top of mind for you and those you care about. Number one. You're so pretty. I love your hair. I love your nails. I love your dress. I love your eyes. Yes, we all enjoy receiving compliments and looks are important in almost every culture around the world. But the huge emphasis on little girls' looks above anything else just reinforces an overly external and materialistic approach to women in general. It sends the message to little girls that they are already getting and inundated with from every media source around that their looks are what makes them valuable and that their looks are the most interesting thing about them. Surely there are other things that we can say to little girls that show them the value of the other parts and the more important parts of who they are. We want to de-emphasize external appearance and re-emphasize internal strengths. Number two, be careful. Little girls are much more protected than little boys. We are much more risk averse when it comes to little girls and we seem to put much less trust and stock in their skills, their motor skills, in their risk assessment skills, and in their abilities to overcome challenges and obstacles, both physical, emotional, and academic. Constantly telling a girl that she should be careful and that we'll do it for her, or that someone else should do it for her, or she should leave it to the boys, sends her the message that she is not a strong person who can overcome challenges and obstacles or be trusted with risk. Women seem to be typically more risk averse than men anyway. This is probably influenced both by nature and nurture, but at least on the nurture side, we can encourage little girls to take risks. We can encourage them not to be so careful, to be willing to put themselves out there, even at the risk of making a fool of themselves or taking a stumble. This approach to girls as fragile makes them so. Number three is be nice. Often when there's an argument or a conflict between children, uh, we hold the unspoken expectation, or the spoken one, that it's the girl's job to be nice. That it's the girl's job, in fact, to just give up on her side of the story, on her needs, and on her wishes, so that she can be nice to others. In his book, The Opposite of Spoilt, Ron Liebler shares that little boys are encouraged to earn money and to save it whilst little girls are encouraged to give their money away. Of course, we want to teach all of our children to be kind and empathic and giving, but little girls often get pushed into niceness and it turns them into pleasers, pathological pleasers. Come on, you and I both know that almost all the women we know are serious pleasers, unable to say no, unable to set up clear boundaries and bleeding heart empaths who don't have their own needs met. Number four, give me a kiss and I'll buy you a present. Give me a kiss or I'll be sad. Little girls are adorable and irresistible and many people would like a kiss from them or for them to sit on their laps or a high five or whatever it is. But eliciting physical affection from a child through guilt or bribing or threatening is a big no-no. We want to teach body autonomy and consent to our children from the youngest of ages. When it comes to touch, uh, you want it to be unconditional, out of the warmth of her heart, and you want her to be receiving it as such as well. Don't do that, you'll get dirty. My mother tells me that when she was a child, she was not allowed to climb trees because it wasn't suitable for little girls to get dirty. 
Now we know better, but still there are people who keep their children pristinely clean and particularly little girls. Getting messy and dirty is an extremely important part of childhood and sensory exploration. And little girls need to be wearing practical clothes and being allowed to be getting messy and not worrying so much about those clothes. This also comes to how we do their hair, constantly harassing them to have it just so, can actually undermine the flow, creativity and freedom of childhood. I'm not saying your child should be unkempt, but the emphasis put on external appearance with little girls sometimes grossly overrides her actual developmental needs. Plus, we do not want to raise a perfectionist. We want to raise someone who knows how to get themselves dirty and be okay with it. You look sad, should we get you a cookie? If you do this, I'll give you a lollipop. Creating a connection between emotions and food is a big mistake when it comes to raising both girls and boys, but we know that girls suffer particularly from eating disorders. We also know that any emphasis we're putting on eating as parents should really be only about health, growing strong, and nutrition. So you don't want to be creating links like food for behavior or food for good feelings or not that food because it's fattening, but rather really focusing on creating healthy relationship with food. Number seven, you make me sad when you do that. Very often we use emotional manipulation such as you're making me sad to manipulate our children's behaviors. And this seems to be more common with girls than with boys, although it's a problem with both. It's extremely important that we separate our emotions from our requests when it comes to our children's cooperation and collaboration with us. With our little girls, we need to teach them that we expect certain limits to be respected and the real reason why, but not to intertwine our own emotions and put our emotions as a burden onto them. We don't wanna engage in this reverse parenting dynamic where the child suddenly has to behave a certain way in order for the parents to feel happy. We are in charge of our own happiness. We are in charge of our emotional response and we never want to give our child that kind of power. It's too much for them and it's unfair on them. Number eight, I shouldn't have eaten that. I'm so fat, I'm getting gray hairs. Oh, I'm really aging, I hate my skin. I hate my arm, I hate my thighs. I need to lose weight. Complaining about your own body and image in front of your child, or even not in front of your child, because we all know that those energies are there and children can feel it all, is a surefire way of setting that voice in motion in her head, of her feeling like she's not good enough and she's not measuring up either. Instead, we want to cultivate a diverse celebration of all the different types of beauty that exist. In terms of size and age and color, we want to show that we celebrate our own bodies and that we celebrate everybody else's bodies too. Number nine, calm down. You're so hysterical. You're overreacting. Stop whining. When women have strong emotional reactions to things, they are often pegged as hysterical and overreacting. Whereas men might be pegged as passionate or strong-minded or bold. If little girls are using a high-pitched voice or they're screaming or they're having strong emotional reactions, that's okay. We can handle it. <laughs> She's healthily expressing her emotions. Now, by all means, don't allow her to be destructive or violent, but absolutely encourage and allow her to voice her feelings, uh, whether it's through crying or whining or um, being upset about something and being vocal about it. Over the years, you're gonna wanna teach them some coping mechanisms, some conflict resolution skills, and ways of communicating that are more effective, but we don't wanna peg children as being hysterical or being overreactive when they're being emotional and they are responding in a way that is subjectively absolutely accurate. We would all respond that way if we felt the feelings that she feels now. And finally, you're so bossy. If a child is taking the reins and is directing the show, then that is a wonderful set of skills that they're developing there that many people look up to, aspire to, and benefit from. And for some reason where we um, appreciate it and admire it in boys, we seem to want to downplay it in girls, almost as though we're afraid of raising powerful, strong women. Those are my top 10 things to stop saying to girls. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. So 
subscribe to the channel here on YouTube by pressing the red button and don't forget to click the little notification bell so that you're actually told when I upload a new video, which is every Monday. If you're looking for a supportive community of like-minded parents, I warmly invite you to join our Love Parenting with Avital Facebook group. Plus, head on over to theparentingjunkie.com and sign up for email updates so I can gift you my free PDF guide, 10 Easy Steps to Transform Your Home into a Play-Inducing Haven. Don't forget to grab your free cheat sheet in the link below. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. The Parenting Junkie.